Now, Himachal Chief Minister Sukhwinder Singh Sukhu has finally spoken out on this issue. He has denied that there is any delay in salaries of government employees. He is saying that there is misinformation being spread by the BJP. Listen in. टीसी की सैलरी हमेशा सतारा जून सतारा अठारह तारीख को ही मिलती है नहीं हाँ तो खुद कह रहे तो सतारा चौदह तारीख को मिली आजकल में मिल जाएगी अच्छा टीसी का भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने पिछले तीन साल से ओवर टाइम नहीं दिया था नाइट नहीं दी थी मैंने उनकी ओवर टाइम और नाइट की आधी पेमेंट कर दी है और आधी हम वो करने जा रहे हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी से पूछा जाना चाहिए ना कि वो तीन साल से उनके नाइट और ओवर टाइम क्यों नहीं दिया दिया गया और जो सैलरी की बात है मेरे समय से नहीं है हमें तो अभी छह महीने हुए सरकार में आए हम तो जो व्यवस्था बिगड़ी हुई है उसको ठीक कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये दृष्टिकोण अपनाना कि हम पर दोष लगाना गलत बात है Let's go across to the guest joining us. Dhruv Jati is a Congress spokesperson. Professor Dr. Uh, Aman Agarwal is director, Indian Institute of Finance, also with us. I'm also expecting Shazia Elmi of the BJP to be with us very soon. Uh, Dhruv, uh, you know, this is a question that the Congress party is going to face uh, almost every day. You're facing this in Karnataka, not just the fact that you've changed the very nature of the guarantees you promised at the time of elections. So even if you're being financially prudent now, that wasn't what was promised to the public. And of course, the burden on the exchequer. And in state after state, more such reports are coming to light. How do you explain the fact that in Himachal, a state that has minim, you know, very limited resources, you promised the moon to the public and now people are suffering? Shivani, I agree that the situation in Himachal is no doubt challenging. But uh, speaking about Karnataka, the Congress party wasn't just the only party that uh, put forth welfare schemes. It was even the Bharatiya Janata Party as well in their manifesto that had promised these welfare schemes. Now, talking about uh, what has been put forth, um, mainly is that uh, if you look at it, even the Supreme Court had observed that political parties cannot have any restrictions on what schemes are, on what schemes, you know, uh, they can be, what I would say, um, reduced to. Uh, every political party has the right to go ahead and speak about what they propose to the party and the, to the people, and that's the observation made by the Supreme Court. Now, the bigger hindrance that we should uh, be speaking about is about what is happening with the money that is being given to corporates. Is there any uh, sort of accountability that the central government has? And, no, no, uh, I'm sorry, why, Dhruv, why is it that Dhruv, 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 don't, 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 don't deviate from the questions. We are discussing doles being promised at the time of elections. Right or wrong is a separate matter. I'm not even going into the merits of promising cash in the hands of all women in a state, for example, of free public transport, which you're now putting conditions on. You're being very smart and prudent about this in Karnataka now. But then that brings us to the political question that you fool the public that everyone will get it, which eventually is not the case. But please answer my pointed question. In a state like Himachan, was it not financially you know, imprudent to offer things like a reversal of the NPS, to offer 300 units of electricity free. The state cannot afford it. No, we, we cannot deny that it's not a challenging situation. I wholeheartedly agree that it is a challenging situation in Himachal, but you cannot say that in Karnataka we fool the people simply because there are beneficiaries already of the Congress guarantees and they were happy. You must look through most of the videos or the clippings. No, a lot of them were, are complaining too. During the scheme of the... I'm talking about the free bus pass system, which uh, was recently inaugurated. And you can see the happiness amongst people, especially those in the rural areas who suffer to, you know. You know, uh, can I tell you, know, you there are images on social media and they are not rural women. In fact, the question that is being faced, that is being asked on social media is, did these women deserve free bus tickets? The kinds that are posting their selfies with those free tickets. Including so your I mean, Congress spokesperson. No, I understand what you're referring to. And in order to promote the scheme that is put forth by the party, I think it's important that awareness is spread on okay. the whole. There are two issues here. No, no, Dhruv, there are two the issues here. If the state am, can afford it, myself. if the state can afford it, the state must offer, you know, more services to the public. I don't think anybody is denying that. But one, this is about what was promised at the time of election and the nature of the scheme implemented. That is one issue. The second issue, I want to go across to the financial uh, expert on our show, Dr. Aman. The other issue is about what states are going through as far as their exchequer is concerned, their debt ratios is concerned, the loans that they're having to take to pay these 
uh, to service their salaries, pensions, etc. Are you sensing that in the race to come to power, and we live in very politically heightened atmosphere, you know, parties and governments just no longer are looking at the financial health of a state? No, I quite agree with your statement which you have made just now. But the important thing is, firstly, a very thin line uh, which actually divides between freebies and welfare schemes. Mm -hmm. And that's been a complex question because the opposition always says this is a freebie and the party in power will say this is a welfare scheme. Mm. And this is not something unique with uh, India or any other specific country. It's every, whether it's a developed country like the United States or Japan or even a country like India, we have seen these kind of things happen where uh, freebies or subsidies or, in fact, uh, welfare schemes are given out. Uh, in a country like India, uh, for till almost 2015-16, roughly about uh, 13 uh, lakh crore was being waived every year on account of farm waivers and others. And then there was a major stop which was done, uh, you know, accounting for that. But then again, recently we saw, again, farm waivers has become a move which is getting up given the fact that elections are due. Mm. So there is a very thin line between welfare and uh, and what you call uh, freebies. freebies yes. But what you rightly said is very critical, whether we can afford that freebie or not, or a welfare scheme to be given out, looking at the financial condition or the balance sheet of our state. Mm. And that is very critical for both the party in power as well as the administration there to actually enlighten them that this would not be an important factor to go forward, given the fact that it is the taxpayers' money yeah. which they're actually using to go and give out these freebies or welfare Not just taxpayers' money. At large. One could and argue, as many political parties do, that everybody pays tax. It's not just about direct income tax. But, you know, fundamentally the issue that the public does need to understand is that these so quote-unquote freebies, they come from someone's pocket, right? The government doesn't Correct. magically produce this. So in Karnataka, Correct. for example... There are people who are paying a higher electricity bill than they used to before the new government came to power. Rates have been hiked, etc. I know Congress will say this was partly done by the previous government. And there are some who will get the benefit of 200 units, up to 200 units of electricity free. So, you know, while some may benefit, the others are having to pay for it. For, for others, there is a cost involved, an additional cost involved.